sending, preaching, hearing, believing, and calling. Those are single words that you need to understand what they mean. What is God's plan? Verse 17. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. That's the plan. So we have sending the preacher, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, hearing the gospel of Christ, and believing this Christ, then calling on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Notice what comes last? The calling. To call on the Lord Jesus Christ before you hear it, before you hear the gospel, before you hear it, and before you believe it. You have, calling on the Lord Jesus Christ does not save you. Anyone who calls on the Lord Jesus Christ is saved, that is not true. Millions of people have called on the Lord Jesus Christ and are not saved. Calling on the Lord Jesus Christ. I think it says that, don't it? So, why does Paul tell us in verse 13? that calling on the Lord as something that is needed to happen after believing on the Lord. Why is it that he says calling before believing? Aren't we justified by faith alone? John Piper says. Believing on the Lord is because he has in mind a salvation larger than simply justification alone. Calling upon the Lord means more than just simple salvation. Follow me now. This is very profound that most of us don't get. There is more to salvation than calling on the name of the Lord. Call, just the way around. Calling on the Lord is more than just calling on Him to save you. It's much more than that. Most people don't get it. They don't go beyond that. I think it. I think Paul means the whole experience of deliverance, not only from the guilt of sin, but from the power and from many temptations and many trials and from hell and from the wrath in God in the last days. It is more than just being saved from the wrath of God. It is more than just getting out of hell. It means that you are going to be delivered from the temptations that is going to come your way in the future. Salvation extends beyond the moment that you ask Christ to come into your heart. Most people don't have any clue what that means to ask Jesus to come into your heart. I don't know that I... Re I, I guess I did. I start saying, I don't know that I really knew what it meant when I asked Charity to come to live with me. And I know she didn't know what it meant <laughs> when she asked me to come to live with her. No idea! <laughs> And the problem is, when people get married today and they find out that they have to live together, they get a divorce. They don't know what it means when you took the vows, when you took the vows and you said you would live with your wife no matter what they did. They said it without knowing what it meant. And the same thing happens when a Christian says, I call upon the name of the Lord to save me, and I want him to come into my life, but when he does, I'm getting out because I can't stand him. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't mean that. I just want him to save me from hell. I don't want Christ to come to live in my life. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't want the responsibility of being a Christian. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm preaching on Wednesday night, there is responsibility of being a Christian. And they don't want the responsibility of being what a Christian is, and therefore they're not saved. That's right. Sorry to say. 
Well, thanks for preaching, preacher. God has ordained that we be justified by faith, but that we express that faith over and over throughout life. It is a continuation that from the time I got saved, I'm constantly calling on the name of the Lord almost every day of my life. And that says, well, have you prayed about it? Praying about it is calling on the Lord. I believe that my salvation is a continuation of calling on the Lord every day of my life as my Lord. That is what it means, in part, to call on the name of the Lord, not just at one day, but every day throughout your life. Calling on the Lord for deliverance and help a thousand ways. Reference, Psalms 18.3. Psalms 50.15. Terry says, take time to read them. Psalms 91.15. Okay, Psalms 145. Psalms 145 and verse 18. What should be the wrong verse? 145 and verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. Call on the name of the Lord in truth. You just can't call upon the Lord any old way. It has to be in truth. So even in the Old Testament, we were taught called to call upon the Lord and obey. What does it mean to be a Christian? 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, chapter verse 2. Those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, 1, 2. Believing. Secondly, is believing. Verse 14, but, are, but how are they to call on Him in whom they have not believed? Many people call upon the Lord when they are in trouble, when they get hurt, who really do not believe on Him. They're rather angry and in an emergency they call on Him. It's not from faith. There is no true love for Christ. God is not just a skilled paramedic who comes and goes in the same night. But that's what many people believe. Well, you just got to call on Jesus. You just got to pray to Jesus. They don't. They really don't believe in God. Well, to clear this matter up, the calling that Paul has in mind is calling on <coughs> Jesus Christ as Lord. Get it? When you call upon the name of the Lord, you've got to call him specifically Jesus Christ as Lord. Our Lord is not some stranger who shows up to get us out of trouble. Or when we get angry and into the night, Romans 10, 9. Until you believe first in Jesus Christ as Lord, you can't call on Him only as Lord. I'm going to call the Lord knowing that if I call upon Him, He is my Lord. L-O-R-D, capital Lord, Lordship Salvation. He's in control. He has authority. No matter what God does, He can do it. Have you, have you, have, how have you been taught how to describe your conversion and your Christian growth? We used to have fun doing this in our fellowship and churches that I've pastored. I'm not asking you, but I'm just saying, how, were, how do you know you were saved? Give me your, give me, give me your conversion. 
experience. Tell me how you became a Christian. Well, one day I was walking down the street when I was a little guy and lightning came and I said, Oh, Lord, save me! And from that point on, I was saved. Started telling you, John, but that's that was. <laughs> I'm kidding. <coughs> Terry was talking to a young girl and she said, Honey, how, how did you become a Christian? She says, I was out on a boat with my dad. Grandpa. And grandpa, and it almost signed. You answer me. Just because you're my wife, you can't answer either. But I'm going to try to get the story right. And she says, how were you saved? Well, I was out on a boat with my grandpa, and the boat... I got a fishing line all tangled up. And that's when she said, oh, God, save me. And so I've been saved ever since. In her mind, she called upon the name of the Lord to save me. Right? You check it out. Okay. <laughs> I've been in church ever since then. And, uh, that doesn't save you. That was when he was getting ready to baptize her. And I didn't baptize her either. Calling upon the name of the Lord doesn't save you. Believing on the Lord. Then you could call upon him as Lord because you know him. Let me, let me make a few points here. Next page. 